Beautiful morning. Looks like we got some rain up here. Recently had that giant weather system come across California. Got some very light sprinkles where I live. The foothills. But we're up at up above 5,000 foot between Shaver and Huntington Lake. And, uh, just a beautiful day out just got past this really bad heat wave that we had out here in california uh 115 i believe is what we we're experiencing near the uh, the valley near fresno but it was a little cooler up here in the hills up here in the mountainous area but today gosh feels like High 60s, low 70s right now where I'm at. Maybe 70 flat. Just beautiful. Beautiful, moist temperature. All right, here's our line. Got to go locate a tree and uh, apply our QAQC to this program. We were talking last week about potentially setting up a benchmark for some of these younger folks um, in the industry and uh, talking about relating bark char codes to cambium kill. So trying to get a better understanding for these guys of uh, probability of mortality in trees after wildfires. So... Instead of using that old approach of digging in with a hatchet on the side of a tree and checking the cambium, you can just relate the bark char codes to get your cambium kill. And depending on the species of the tree, you can relate that to the probability of mortality in these species. Got a, looks like a lodgepole right there. Some white firs, incense cedars, nice mixed forest. All right, Data Tree Consulting, signing out for now. Great weather for mushroom hunting. I will be keeping an eye out for the elusive Amanita muscaria. And any little blue smurfs that I might see lurking. Ooh, here's some elderberry. Birds like to eat these, but they're also great for humans. You want to stay away from the uh, stem. They can have some toxins in them, but if you get these berries, 
and uh, just clip it right there at that little stem above the berry. Put it in a bag and throw it in your freezer for a couple days. After that, try to gently get the berries off of the stem. I like to soak them in water first before I do all that in case there's any bird poop or insect poop or anything on them. But uh, get all that dirt and crud off there, soak them maybe overnight, and then freeze them. After you freeze them, they'll come off the stem a little bit easier, and then you can uh, mush those up into a jar, add some vodka, probably one part vodka to one part berry. Let it sit for about a month, and you'll have yourself a nice tincture. It's a good remedy for flu season. All right, back to the hunt. Let's look for some mushrooms. If I was a mushroom, I would probably be right over here. Right around this area. More to come. Just south of the 168, quarter mile or so. About a good mile as the crow flies north of Shaver Lake. In the Creek Fire footprint. Couple years after the catastrophic wildfire. You can see some of the remnants. Some trees did a lot better than others. Most of the thin barked deciduous trees like black oaks, they can't resist the uh, radiant heat scorching damage from these wildfires. Typically, they will go into decline and uh, won't survive. I believe that tall fir behind the snag is my tree. Approximately 135 foot white fur with strike potential to the 220 kV line down there. You can see the tower a little bit. There we go. So we will do some quality assurance, quality control. Reevaluate this tree for risk. That sun is blinding. Quick tree ID for ya. California black oak. Got some wildfire damage down here at the base. You could see that uh, the tree was stressed out and it split. And if you look really close, you can see that bulge, the live cambium, that cell uh, cell layer there is, is bulging out, pushing the, the bark away from the tree. Making a little bit of a split, a little more susceptible to insects and stuff getting in there. Um, this other stem, not doing as well, flaking off bark. This one's definitely 
going to cause the tree to uh, go further into a decline. Epicormic sprouts or adventitious growth at the base of the tree, another indicator that the tree was extremely stressed out from wildfire and uh, this is a survival mechanism of the tree. Pushing out some new sprouts so that it can continue to um, use photosynthesis. Good leaf arrangement right there. California black oak. Piece of metal from the old utility pole, I imagine. Got a replacement in here. That's how hot this creek fire got. All right, all done with this section. Some interesting finds. Found some trees that did need to come out. Some trees that are gonna live to fight another day. We're gonna recommend to put those as subject trees continue to patrol them on future passes. Huh. How sweet is that? A little heart. One major concern that I had was running into a tree that had no strike potential. It was downhill. But one, one thing that maybe would be great is if they updated the software and uh, and put that as one of the uh, potential enhancers or defects if a tree is uphill from the infrastructure, typically poses more of a threat. We do take into account tree lean, but it'd be a good thing to get these guys to consider that the tree is uphill or downhill, which could uh, increase the risk ranking but a tree was approximately 15 foot short of strike potential and downhill from the line. And to me, that's a big deal. It wasn't a transmission line where we would account for the, uh, the lines swaying, max swaying out up to 50 feet. Now this one, it was just short of strike potential. So if you're taking these fines, updating my spreadsheet and trying to help the utility create a future benchmark for these guys and uh, guys and gals. And uh, just take the experience that I have, the decades of time jumping back and forth into this industry some more beautiful elderberries. Yummy. Oh, almost passed my truck right up. Just take this knowledge and pass it down to these folks that don't have as much experience with utility or board culture and specifically um, wildfires. How they affect these trees so that is a typical utility trim right there guys <laughs> all right data tree consulting group signing out for now thanks for your time all right last tree for the day kind of a cool one sugar pine you can tell sugar pines usually from a distance if they have cones on them because the edges of the branches, they, they droop down a little bit from these heavy cones. But a uh, beautiful tree. You can see a little bit of a codom up there. You can see where uh, the tree turns into two dominant tops, splits right there in the middle. And uh, that's a defect in this tree. 
it should just be one stem all the way to the top with scaffold branches coming off of it. But because that is kind of a smaller codominant top, doesn't play a huge risk factor into our assessment. This tree has some wildfire damage, but because of the type of species that it is, there's one of the cones down here, critter eating this thing up. Here's a good one. So I'm gonna have the real elongated cone that can get pretty heavy. So the assessor felt that there was enough damage to the lower panel, the lower tree bowl here from the wildfire. You can see we have some dead branches here at the, at the base of the tree from the wildfire and some exposed girdled roots where the fire was able to get in here into the root crown, do a little bit of damage, uh, boil this root system a little bit. But if you look at the bark, you're gonna be looking for areas of real thinned out bark for cambium kill, potentially a little bit down here. You can see that's, that's got some cambium kill in it right there. So we would call this quadrant cambium kill. But if you move over just a little bit, so for probably from there to approximately the other side of this um, exposed root system. Let's just go ahead and jump over to this root going. To, yeah, big difference, big difference already. Just right here. That's that's your live cambium right in there. And if you go onto the actual trunk, this is all just superficial, superficial damage it's still very much alive in there so just this side quadrant one quadrant we would consider cambium kill and uh over here yeah once again not very much damage it's all superficial so break this up into our cardinal directions this would be the north side uh, no cambium kill west side no cambium kill south side no cambium kill just the east side at the lower tree bowl where the the root crown is exposed we we could call that cambium kill so for this type of species not a significant amount of wildfire damage to the to the lower tree bowl and uh, you can see that in the crown there. It's nice, vibrant green top. As far as the height factor, we got uh, approximately 88 feet on the tree height with a slope distance to the line of 80 foot. So if the tree did fall, it's a little bit uphill, as we talked about, taking that into consideration. It is slightly uphill. Uh, even with that, the hypotenuse distance from the base of the tree to the nearest conductor is 80 foot. So about eight feet, eight to 10 foot of the tree top could impact the line if it failed at the base of the tree. But for this type of species, not a significant amount of damage to this tree and not enough structural integrity loss at the base of the tree to where this tree is likely to impact the high voltage lines here. So we're going to go ahead and recommend turn this into a subject tree and preserve the habitat. We're kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. Um, one of the cool things about my job is I got these keys that get me into these very backwoodsy sections. Don't have to hike it all the way out and uh, can get my four x four truck in here 
on some of these dirt roads, dirt access roads that they created to install these poles. But uh, great, great areas. Uh, we're in the National Forest right now, Sierra. And uh, if you're into hunting, fishing, stuff like that, it, it, great, beautiful areas. I think just north of where I'm at is a little section of uh, private property. I think there's a snowmobile park up there. But very, very cool spot. And uh, blessed to have a set of trees, or a set of keys rather like that, that get me into these backwoodsy sections without having to spend the entire day hiking around to get here. Had a little bit of thunder activity. Um, no danger. Haven't seen any lightning, but uh, just such a beautiful time of year. This is this is a, a redhead's paradise right here. So I think we're officially past summer and trying to get in and, and get a good set of eyes on these trees before we get snowed out and before it uh, becomes a little bit harder to get tree crews in here to, to do the work. So prioritizing risk, delisting trees where we need to, and uh, making sure we're not leaving any hazards behind. Don't Even though there, there has been a recent wildfire in here, another one could start very easily with these uh, grasses and brush and stuff that has taken over the ground floor. Data Tree Consulting Group, please like, subscribe these videos if you like this content, and uh, pass the word along. We're out here saving trees if we can. Quick tree ID for everybody. What is it? It's a white fur. White fur, you can tell by how the needles are kind of V'd out and pointing upwards. Typically when these trees mature a little bit, That'll flatten out just, just a tad. And uh, you'll have one needle. Oh, low battery. One needle pointing out in this direction, the other pointing out in that direction, two rows. If it was a uh, Douglas fir, pseudo fir, fake fir, you would have needles in all directions, kind of a panoramic around the stem there. But uh, these are pretty trees, but they can be an issue out here in the forest for the utility. They tend to uh, be a little more susceptible to some of the disease pathogens and, and stuff going on. But uh, what a pretty little Christmas tree that would be, right? 